In this video, I interview Spanish to English translator Lucy Williams about how she got started as a translator. Lucy has a lot to say that'll be very useful for anyone thinking of becoming a translator. She talks about choosing a career compatible with having children, getting into translation without being a language graduate, deciding whether to qualify through the DIPTRANS or an MA in translation, and introducing certain specialisms like fashion and script writing. Translators, I give you Lucy Williams. Lucy, how did you become a translator? Tell us your story. Okay, well, at university, I started um, studying international politics. Um, I didn't study languages at university. I'm not a language graduate. In fact, languages were a rather distant and, in the case of French, somewhat painful memory from um, secondary school. I really enjoyed university, but I've always wanted to live abroad and so after university the way that I found to live and work abroad was uh, teaching English as a foreign language. I moved to Lisbon and lived there for a year, learned a little bit of Portuguese and then moved to Spain. I worked in Spain teaching English as a foreign language for a few years and then after a few years I decided I wanted to settle down and stay in Spain. So I um, continued teaching English as a foreign language but as I started to put down roots here and had a family, had young children, I found that the problem with teaching English as a foreign language was that the hours weren't really compatible with having small children. It was mostly in the evenings, afternoons and evenings. And also I wanted something a bit more challenging than the kind of work you do teaching mostly school children as an extracurricular activity. So I'd managed to learn a high level of Spanish by that stage. I married a Spaniard, <laughs> had some had two children who I was bringing up as bilingual, um, but I didn't have a languages background. So I found it quite difficult to know how to get into the world of translation. I wasn't a language graduate. I hadn't studied translation. So I started off, first of all, trying to get a little bit of translation here and there. Uh, had some success with agencies, started to do some translation work. And after a few years, I found that I was getting some translation work, but that the rates I was getting weren't the kind of rates that I wanted to get. So that led me into looking into the possibility of trying to get a qualification in translation. Once I decided to do a qualification in translation, decided that this was what I needed to progress as a translator. Then I had to look at what qualification could I do? And obviously the two main possibilities were either a master's in translation or doing the diploma in translation. I did look at the idea of doing a master's in translation, but I felt that for me, with my situation where I needed to continue earning a living and I also had two small children, that the financial commitment and the time commitment wasn't something that I could factor into my life. So then I decided that the best option for me would be the diploma in translation. So then I studied for the diploma in translation uh, and uh, passed the exam in 2015 with two merits. And then I really noticed a before and after in both my craft as a translator and also in my my work and the kind of work I was able to to get and to to do and I think for me it's it's been a, a huge positive for me. That's brilliant um, and so and then have you specialized more as you've as you've progressed through your career do you still translate generally or have you gone into any specializations? 
I would say that uh, a lot of my work is is still what you might call general translation, but as time's gone on, I've felt that I have definitely specialised, and I think I've specialised in things that interest me, um, and also things that um, have been offered to me, and I've discovered that I'm actually quite good at them and then that's led me on to further work in those things and then that's developed into specialization for example in fashion in tourism in literature and script writing those are things that have developed gradually but also once I've seen that I have a particular talent for them that I've I've then followed that on and tried to do further training to to really hone those skills what would be a failure that you could share with us? Well, for me, my most obvious failure was the fact that I actually sat the Diptrans twice. I sat it in 2008, right at the beginning of my career, and failed the lot, all three papers. Um, and I think, really, the main reason for that failure was that I didn't know what had hit me. I wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't. I wasn't fully aware of the level that was required. I wasn't aware of the work that was required in in doing it. I sat it blind, really. I also sat it in really inappropriate personal circumstances. I was pregnant. I had a really bad pregnancy. I sat it when I was heavily pregnant. And it's really no surprise that I failed it, to be honest. But it was, I think, it was a really important learning process because it really showed me the level to which I needed to up my game. When I went back, it was completely different because the point when I went back was that I had translated professionally, which I'd barely done before, but also that I knew exactly what I needed to do. I knew exactly the level that was required of me and I'd put the work in and so, sorted out all the problems that had had beset me the first time and and the reason for that really was was having done the course with the translator studio yes well you were our our tester well you were my friend at the time and you came on and and you test ran that course for us and we worked together back in 2014 now yeah and well I can really make the difference I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. I mean, I could certainly, I, my story is similar with the dip trans. I didn't pass all three. I, I only, pa I, pa I passed two and failed one, but I resat and I failed a second time. And it wasn't until my last sitting that I went through uh, and got, having gone through a very similar transformation as, as the one you're talking about. So I think it must happen to a lot of people. And another question for you, what would be your message for translators who are at the beginning of their career? I think it would be that if you are starting out in a career as a translator, then I think you're probably somebody who enjoys learning and is interested in learning and finding out things. And that it's a really excellent career for somebody who has that thirst for knowledge because no no one day is, is the same as another day every day is different the texts you do can be different the clients you work with can be different I also think the people you work with other translators can really offer so much in terms of companionship and and help and you can meet so many interesting people who also have that that interest and if you're the kind of person who really enjoys lifelong learning and finding out about things and professional development and and doing courses and extending your knowledge then it's a great industry to work in and there is so much you can learn and help to progress your business and what does the future look like for you, Lucy, going forward? Well, what, I, what I'm really interested going forward is, is continuing to learn about new things and also continuing with specialisations that I'm interested in, like fashion and tourism and other things that I'm studying now to do with wine and, and food and just growing my business, continuing to learn, 
um, branching out into teaching, which I find really interesting as well. So yes, generally continuing to, to learn and develop. That sounds brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this interview from the Translators Studio. We specialise in teaching the art of translation and in preparing translators for certification through the DIPTRANS exam. If you like our content, please let us know by clicking on the subscribe button. See you in the next video.